Nippon, how to set up and play. Well, it's a rainy day in Japan, and the emperor needs our help transforming Japan from a feudal society into an industrial power. And we play the role of zaibatsus, basically conglomerate corporations within Japan that can specialize in a variety of industries. So the first thing we'll do is set up the player board. Uh, every player gets their own board. They'll start with 12,000 yen and two coal cubes. They'll put all of their ship tiles in this top row and the train tiles in the second row. Make sure the ship tiles are set on the two victory point side to start and the trains are on the plus two versus the plus three. Uh, each player will also set their starting uh, markers. This is the coal track. This is the yen or the money track, and over here is the knowledge track. Players will also set up their eight contract tiles uh, that can be used later in the game to fulfill contracts to foreign markets, and they will have their set of uh, industry tiles that can be placed on the board later in the game. Finally, uh, they'll have a score marker You'll determine the start player randomly. The start player will start with victory points of 10. Play will proceed clockwise. And so the player to uh, clockwise order from them would go on 11, 12, and 13 if it was a four player game. So you get a little bit of a victory point advantage for going later in the turn order. The final item for player board setup is every player will start with one blueprint tile. And this will be used later in the game to augment uh, your knowledge. Okay, now for board setup, you'll lay out each of the city tiles randomly. So shuffle these and then randomly orient them uh, for the different areas of Japan. Japan is divided into four regions with two cities in each region. You can see these dividing lines. There's nine city tiles in the game, so one will randomly not be chosen uh, to be used in the game. These represent the different types of goods uh, in Japan. Next, you'll place the round or the scoring marker on this track. This will be the timer for the game. And we'll talk about how it advances. And it also indicates when scoring rounds are performed. Next, we'll create a supply of all the factory upgrade tiles or the machinery tiles all of the coal cubes, money, and all the blueprints. And we'll also lay out all the factories in the game. There are three levels of factories. Uh, level one factories, level two factories, and level three factories. There's two types of level one factories. There's uh, silk and paper. Two types of level two factories, lenses and food or bento boxes, and two types of level three factories, um, watches and bulbs. The factories are determined based on the nut level of knowledge needed to create them. So you can see level one factories require two knowledge to build them. Level two factories require four knowledge and level three factories require six knowledge. And you'll see later in the game, it references those colors I pointed out on the board. So the green and the gray are represented there and so forth. The next thing we'll do is set up the Emperor Reward tiles. Uh, you'll have a set of just two times generic tiles that are used later if these run out. Uh, you'll sort them by the victory points on their back and before we put them on the board, you'll remove some based on a two and a three player game. If it's a two player game, you'll remove two from each of these stacks. And if it's a three player game, you'll just remove one from each of the victory point stacks. So assuming this is a full four player game, at this point we would just flip them over and then based on their type, they would get put onto the track based on their category. So let me show that again. So since these are the 
two victory point tiles. We'd flip these all over, and they would go in the two victory point column based on their type. So we'd sort them by coal, by money, and by blueprints. And we'd do the same. The three victory points would go in this column, the four victory point tiles would go in that column, and the five victory point tiles would go in this column. So here's what it looks like all set up. Since it's a full, full four-player game, we didn't randomly remove any before we did this. So each victory point column has two of each type, coal, money, and blueprint uh, emperor reward tiles. The next thing we'll do is put all the workers onto the board. Now before you put all the workers into the bag, um, in a four-player game you'd put all the workers into the bag. If it's a two-player game, you would remove uh, one of each color. And if it's a three-player game, uh, you'd remove, I'm sorry, if it's a two-player game, you'd remove two of each color. And if it's a three-player game, you remove one of each color and then put them all in the bag. Now you draw out of the bag randomly three workers for each of these action slots. And that's the same for all player counts. You start the game with three workers in each of those action slots. Uh, in a four-player game, you'll have three workers in every single slot on this board uh, in, a, in a full four-player game. If it was a three-player game, you would only fill up three slots. So three workers on three slots. If it was a two-player game, you would only fill up two workers on two slots. So this refill area gets adjusted based on the number of workers. Full four players, three workers on all. In a three-player game, three workers on three slots. And in a two-player game, two workers on only two slots. This, to start the game, always has three workers in each of these action slots. So I've put this back here for the full four-player game. It's important to remember that during the game, when you take the, um, when the refill phase happens, you refill it based on the original setup for the number of players in the game. So the way the game works is play will proceed clockwise from the start player, and it will only change phases when this runs out of workers. So as workers are being taken, and let's say this is emptied, immediately the top set of workers comes in to refill. If at any point all the workers were emptied and you came to refill and there was nothing left to refill, that triggers the game phase to move forward. You instantly you stop the game and you refill. Basically, you'd refill all the action slots up to three. So you would randomly draw three for this one. You draw one for this one to get all the action slots up to three. And then you would refill these based on the setup uh, in the first part of the game. So a four player game, three for all these, and so forth. If the phase marker crosses this, we immediately perform one of the three scorings in the game. First scoring, second scoring, and third scoring. And we'll talk about that later. When the phase marker gets to here, this indicates that all players will have three actions left in the entire game. So after all players have taken one action, slides, second action, and then all players take their final action, and we do final, the third round of scoring, and then we do end game scoring. So I have reset the workers back uh, to represent startup in a two player game, and we're ready to start. Three workers on each of the slots, and in a two player game, two workers on two refill slots. So let's talk about these eight main actions in the game. And I meant to say nine main actions in the game. You can see each of these action slots has two. And this action slot has one main action that you can take. So basically on a player's turn, you can do one of two things. You can take one of the workers from this action slot, from any of these action slots, and perform either of those two actions. Just one. You can only perform one of those two actions. The worker gets placed on your board. Uh, these worker colors represent foreign 
uh, industrialists, foreign scholars that are helping uh, Japan industrialize their country. The interesting thing is, uh, and you'll see this during the consolidation phase, once you've taken one of a particular color, you've kind of established a relationship with that nation. And so you only have to pay once, regardless of how many of these blue workers you take. So being able to take the same color benefits you at the end of the round when you consolidate your workers. So you either take a worker from an action slot and perform one of the actions in the column, or you consolidate all of the workers on your board. Those are the two things you can do. All right, let's talk about one of the main actions in the game, and that's to build a factory. So let's say, for example, I would establish a relationship with that worker. I'm going to choose this action to take, and all factories cost 6,000 yen in the game, regardless of type. All factories cost 6,000. So you'd pay your 6,000 from your budget area here. So I pay 10. I'd get four back. And then I can decide to build one of the factories. Now I have to have the required knowledge to build the factory. So level one factories require two knowledge. Uh, level two factories require four knowledge. And the level three factories require six knowledge. We start the game with a knowledge level of one. But we also have one blueprint. All players get one blueprint to start the game. So to build a level one factory, I would use my level one knowledge. This never gets discarded. This can continue to move up and I permanently have the level of knowledge that I've risen to. But I would have to discard this blueprint tile and that would give me a total knowledge value of two. And I could build either the silk factory or the paper factory. And I have my choice of all four factory types to build. It's important to remember that you can only ever have one of each um, factory that produces a specific good. So once I have a silk factory, I can no longer have a second silk factory. But I can have one each, if I'm able to, of all the different good types. But I can never have more than one per good type. Each of the factories comes with a bonus. Some, is it, some are an immediate bonus. Some are permanent bonuses that last through the entire game. After I cover all the actions, I'll come back and describe all the building bonuses so they'll make more sense. The second action I want to talk about is the produce action. So by taking a worker here, I can take the produce action. It allows me to produce on up to three of my factories once. Uh, you can see they have to be different factories, so I couldn't produce twice with the same factories. I can produce on up to produce once on up to three different factories. So let's talk about how that works. So to produce on a factory, I have to have the required coal to produce on the factory. I'm going to add one more here as an example. So here I've got a level one, a level two, and a level three factory. And the le these, this factory requires two coal to produce one unit. Same with this one. This factory requires three coal to produce one unit. So I would have to take the coal out of my supply. Here I only have two coal, so I could not even produce on the one that required three, but I could produce on this one or this one. So if I use this two coal to produce on this one, I get one unit of lenses in this case. If I had two, four, seven coal in my, in my immediate supply, I could produce one unit on each of these. Now there's a way to actually produce more than just one unit. Let's talk about that next. Before I do that, I want to mention one last thing on factories. When you actually build the factory, it's on the blueprint side. You should flip it over to the other side and that creates the spot to add actual machinery. And let me add one extra factory so you can see another one. Again, I can have one of each of these types, 
this factory actually takes four coal to produce one unit. So let's talk about the machinery action now. So the machinery action is right here. I can take a worker from this slot and take the machinery action up to three times. So if I pay five, I can get one upgrade, 10 for two upgrades, or 15 for three machinery upgrades. And these are these tiles here. So let's assume I paid 10. 10 for two machine upgrades. That's all I had money for. So I could do a couple things. I could put a machine upgrade there and a machine upgrade there. And now, when these factories produced, they would produce the normal one plus an additional one. So I would use two coal and this factory would produce two units of silk. With that same action, um, I could have instead used both of those upgrades on one factory and make this a plus two. And that's as high as it can ever get is plus two. So now if I use two coal to produce, I would get the base unit plus two additional. So I would have three units of silk here. So you can put your uh, upgrade either onto an empty slot or you can upgrade a one to a two. You can also, if there's no empty slots on your board, maybe that's the only factory I had right here, I can save this for later. Let's say I took the machinery action once. I put, If I did this, I'd have to put one on the board and I would have to upgrade this to two. But let's say I already had one and I did the action twice. I could upgrade this to two. And then since I can't upgrade that further, I can save this for later. But as soon as I got a factory, um, I have to use this immediately. So what can you do with your goods after you've produced them? There's two things you can do with them. The first is you can take the contract action, take a worker here, add it to your board, and you can fulfill up to three contracts. Every player starts with eight contracts. You can see here the requirement. So to fulfill this contract, you would need one good from two different factories. So I could take a good here and a good here, and I could fulfill that contract. These would get discarded back to the supply and I would flip this contract over to say it's fulfilled. By fulfilling contracts, you get bonuses. So this would get me 4,000 4, yen immediately. So this would get me 4,000 yen immediately and I could move up twice on my yen track on my player board. So immediately by fulfilling that, I can move up twice and get the yen associated with it. So the contracts will either give you um, immediate money bonuses that you add to your supply immediately. You can move up the money track three there. Three cash, three money. Here you get two victory points and can move up the yen track two. Here are five victory points and move up the track. And here are just pure victory points, but this would require goods from four different factories. Two goods from one, two goods from a different one, and one good from a different one, and then a final good from a different factory. So that's the requirement to fill and the bonus you get. The other main action you can do with your goods uh, is the local markets action. I like to think of this as the Nippon action because we're supplying goods uh, to the citizens of Japan. So it, require, it, it allows you to supply up to three influence tiles into one region. The equal sign means all three of your tiles have to go to the same region. So how this works is you first convert goods into influence tiles and you use this table. So if I'm pulling one good off of a level one factory, I would use, I would be able to convert that to a level one influence tile. So you can see the number of goods you're pulling off of the factory based on the level of the factory indicates the type of influence tile you can take. So in this example, this is a level one factory. I could pull all three of these cubes off for a single three tile, or I could use two of them for a two tile and one of them for a one tile. So I could actually use these three cubes to get two different tiles, a one and a two, or a single three tile. I could also use the two cubes on this level two factory to get a four tile. So since the local market action allows me to put 
three tiles into the same region, let's do that. Let's try to get the maximum number of tiles. So I will use two goods from this silk factory and one good. The one good gets me a one tile and the two goods gets me a two tile. And these get discarded. And I will use the two goods from this lenses factory, two goods from a level two factory to get my four tile. So now I've got these three tiles to place on the board. Keep in mind that these tiles are limited. So once they're placed on the board, um, they're locked in there. Now you can get these back if another player displaces you in the region. Now I've got to decide on which region. Now remember, these two tiles are associated with silk. So I've got to provide the local markets with my silk and also the local markets with lenses. I think this region is going to give me the best opportunity because there's in this city, they need silk. And in this city, they need silk. And there's also two spots to place my lens tile. The number printed on the board represents the current influence from the foreign markets. So currently this region of Japan, that city is importing this good, but we're a local provider, so they always prefer ours over the foreign markets. So we'll provide silk there, and we'll provide silk there. And then we'll take our level 4 lens tile, and we'll provide it there. So even though this was a number three, they always prefer local goods. So we're able to place that. And so this allowed me to put the maximum. I put three tiles into one region. You'll notice that every region has a bonus. So this region, every tile I place using this action, I get 5,000 yen. So by placing those three tiles, I immediately get 15,000 yen into my supply. This region allows me to get two victory points per tile I placed during this action. This region allows me to immediately get two coal for each tile I placed. And in this region, I immediately get two blueprint uh, tiles for each tile I placed. Now later in the game, if another player took that same action and they wanted to put influence tiles in this region, and let's say this came from a lens factory, they could place here or this city, their value is higher than this one. So they could actually replace the yellow player's tile. This would get returned to the yellow player's supply, which they could use later. But this player now actually provided a better quality or more output of lenses, so the local market preferred that. Here are some differences. In a three-player game, only three of the four spots are allowed to be occupied. And in a two-player game, only two of the spots are allowed to be occupied. So what happens? So in a three-player game, if I was coming in, obviously if it was one of these goods, I could replace since it's higher. Or if I had a level five tile that came from a watch uh, clock factory or watch factory, I could actually place it there and then it would force the lowest value tile off the board because in a three player game you can only have three tiles. Now if I only had a level one tile I couldn't place there because it's not higher than anything on the board but since it is it would displace the lowest. And the same thing works in a two player game. If I was to come in with this level five tile and let's say it was for silk I could place this here and it would force one of these to get removed from the game. And just to clarify, the tile isn't actually removed from the game. It gets returned back to the player supply. And this is, again, just for a two-player game. Only two of these things can be occupied, two of the city spots. The last point on the local market action, um, if the number of cubes in the factory allows you to take a tile, uh, but you don't have that tile, as long as it's equal to or less, you could take one of the lower tiles and use that as your placement. Okay, the next action we'll look at is the ship's action. You can come here and pay 5 to place one ship on the board, 10 to place two ships, or 15 to place three ships. They have to be in different regions. That's what that references. 
So take a worker, add it to your board, and let's say I placed, uh, paid $10. I can take two ships off of my board and then put them in two different regions. So since I have a nice presence here, I'm going to put one there and I'll put one here. You'll see that the number of spots is limited based on the players in the game. So in a two-player game, only these four could be taken. If you had a three-player game, you've got a couple extra spots. And in a four-player game, all eight spots could be occupied. What the ships do is during the scoring round that we'll talk about later, they add victory points to your total if you come in first or second in the region. Next, let's talk about the train action because it works the same as the ship action. You can come here and pay 5, 10, or 15 for 1, 2, or 3 train placements on the board. Again, they need to be in different regions. So let's come here and say we played 10. We can put two trains on the board. Trains will allow, they will add to your region influence total. So yellow has a pretty good influence here. So maybe they'll add one here for later to help them. And they'll add one to this region to help them. So they have to be in different regions. One other thing to keep in mind is that at any point, when you remove the, both the boat and the train from a single column, you get to move up the income track one. So since on subsequent actions, I put two boats out, and then once I put the two trains out, it unlocked that. So I can immediately move up my income track two in this case. For both boats and ships, once the number of spots are filled up, uh, there are no more sp spots available, so you'll have to go to a different region if possible. All right, two more actions to talk about. The first one is moving up the knowledge track. So you can come here to move up the knowledge track either one, two, or three spaces. If you pay one, you can move up the knowledge track once. If you pay three, you can move it twice. And if you pay six, you can actually move it up uh, three times. And that happens just immediately on your player board. So let's say I paid one to move it up one. I would just do that. So there I paid one to move it up one. Again, on the same action, I could have paid three to move it twice or six to pay it three times. The final action is the coal track, and it works the same exact way. You can pay one, three, or six to move it up one, two, or three spaces immediately on your coal track. And you'll notice that on all the tracks, there are certain thresholds. So by moving it up here, I'm still at a coal level two. So during the consolidate action, I'll only get two coal, and we'll talk about that. I'll need to get it up to this level to get to the next level of coal and it works for the same way for knowledge. So if I'm here, I'm still only a level two knowledge until I get it to the next bump. And you'll see there's also victory points at the end of the game by getting to certain levels. The yen track's a little bit different. Each single level of the yen track is an increase in revenue. So to recap all the actions, you can pay six to build a factory. You can pay money to upgrade the output of your factory with machineries. You can come here to use coal to produce on your factory. With those goods, you can fulfill foreign contracts up to three, or you can take the local market or the Nippon action to satisfy the local market and put influence tiles. You can also put trains on the board to help add to your influence in the region for scoring, or you could put ships on the board that help you score additional victory points if you come in first or second in the region. Finally, you can pay money to move up both the coal track or the knowledge track. So on your turn, you either take one of the actions, you'll take one of the actions, or you can choose to consolidate all of your workforce. Now, if you had put the last worker there on your previous turn, you are now forced to consolidate on your next turn because you have no more available spots to take another action. Basically, consolidation uh, represents administrative work, and also you're presenting your work to the emperor, so you're eligible, in some cases, to get an emperor reward tile if you're above the CERN level here. So let's go through the steps to consolidate. The first thing in the consolidation phase is you discard all remaining money and coal. So one of the key strategies of the game, 
before you consolidate is to be as efficient as possible and spend uh, your money and your call, either producing or, or purchasing through actions on the board. Once you've discarded all your money on the board, you will actually earn new call and new yen based on your position on the track. So here I've got call of three and yen of 16. So I will literally add that to my board. So I've taken my call and my yen and I've added it to my budget. And now, after presenting my work to the emperor, I'm eligible for an emperor reward tile. I can take up to a four tile or lower. Since I made that level, I can't take a five level tile. And you'll remember from setup that these will give you bonuses, but they'll also give you victory points at the end of the game, depending on where you place them on your board. So since I'm eligible for a level four uh, emperor tile, I'm definitely going to take one from the four column. There may be a situation where I really wanted a blueprint bonus and they're all gone, so maybe I'll take this one from a lower victory point tile. But these are all available, so I'm making two decisions. The first thing I'm deciding is what immediate benefit I want right away. If I take this one, I'll get two coal placed right into my uh, budget area for use on the next round, which will help me. I can get 5,000 5, additional yen placed right into my supply, or I can get a two blueprint tile that will give me extra temporary knowledge that I can use to build factories. So let's say I take this. I need the money next round. So I immediately get the 5,000 into my bank supply, and now I flip it over and I'm going to decide, remember this was a level 4 victory point tile, I decide which of these areas I want to place this. And this will give me an end game multiplier at the end of the game. It's important to keep in mind that once it's placed, it cannot be changed. So if I decide to get this victory point multiplier and get 4 points times the number of level 2 and 3 buildings I have at the end of the game, I can no longer move it. Some are pre-printed. If I want to, I can overwrite the pre-printed victory points that I would get at the end of the game with this. So this is a one-time decision that I need to make immediately in terms of what I want to score. So let's cover each of these at the end when we talk about endgame scoring. The final thing we'll do in the consolidation phase is we actually have to pay our bills. So this player did a pretty good job of getting relationships with the same country, black, white, and one with the blue. So you have to pay 3,000 yen per color. So three, six, 9,000 yen. If I had one of each of the six colors, I'd be in real trouble. That'd be three times six for 18,000 yen. So good thing I've collected the money based on the money track, and this would come immediately out of my money supply. So I would have to pay 9,000 and I would get that back. And now all these workers get discarded and they go back into the bag for possible redraw in new rounds. If you are ever unable to pay for your workers, you actually lose two victory points per color that you cannot pay. So for every 3,000 yen you're short, you would lose two victory points. Another thing to keep in mind is if all the tiles are taken that you are interested in or eligible for, you can always take a base two times multiplier. You don't get an immediate bonus, but you can place it on your board for end game victory points. So now that we understand how all the different actions work and how consolidation works, let's go over all the different building types and how scoring works in each of the rounds and you'll be ready to play. Let's take a quick look at all the different bonuses that the factory tiles give you. So this factory gives 5,000 yen immediately, one time use, once it's used. Uh, this gives you a two blueprint, immediate, one-time use. This lets you move up the income track, uh, two spaces, one-time use. This one gives you a permanent power for the rest of the game. It gives you a discounted rate when going up the knowledge track. You only have to pay zero to move up one, uh, two to move up two, or four yen to move up three spaces. This one, whenever you're consolidating, you're allowed to keep one coal. You don't have to discard it. You can use it for the next round. This gives you two immediate movements up the knowledge track, just one time. This allows you to get 2,000 yen every 2,000 additional yen each time you consolidate and add that to your money supply. 
And this allows you, every time you're moving up the knowledge track, you get to move an additional space. So if you take the action to move one, you can move two. If you take the action and pay to move two spaces, you can move three. So it's one additional. These don't have bonuses, but you can see their coal requirement is, is less than the normal level two factory. So this only takes two coal to produce, but no bonus. This gives you a discount uh, for ships during the game. 2, 7, and 12 for 1, 2, or 3 ships placed on the board. This gives you a discount for moving up the coal track, lower than the normal rate, throughout the rest of the game. This allows you to flip all of your remaining boat tiles on your board over to the 3 victory point side. So you would flip your remaining over, and then now, whenever the new ones get placed, you'd get 3 bonus victory points during scoring, which we'll talk about. This one gives you two immediate movements up the coal track, one-time use. This allows you to immediately place two boat tiles from your board onto the main board, following the normal rules. They have to be placed in different regions. And this allows you an additional movement up the coal track whenever you take um, uh, the coal action. I think it's called the mining action, but whenever you're moving up the coal track, you get to move an additional one. These, again, no bonuses, but they take less coal to produce than the standard number. This one gives you a discount when putting trains on the board. This gives you a discount when taking the machinery action. This one lets you immediately flip all of your trains over to the plus three side. So now when you place these, the remaining ones, you get to flip all those over. You'll get plus three for each uh, train you place on the board after buying this factory. This immediately gives you two machinery upgrades that you can apply immediately. So you could buy this factory and put them on immediately on this factory if you wanted to or other factories. This one lets you immediately put two trains on the board, again in different regions. This factory lets you produce one additional on this factory only. So it's like having already a plus one on the, uh, the factory, which you can still add to with machinery when you buy this factory. The normal limit still applies. You can never have more than four units of a good on any factory. Okay, let's cover scoring. Uh, before we cover scoring, one final reminder on the actions. In order to take an action, you have to be able to perform the action. So you couldn't take this to take this action if you had zero money left just to get an extra worker on your board before consolidation. You have to be able to execute the action. Okay, let's cover scoring. So whenever the marker moves past this spot, we do an immediate scoring. We're gonna score each round based on the three scoring phases in the game. So during the first, first scoring, the first place player will get 10, second place seven, and third place five. And you can see that's dramatically increased in the third and final scoring. 20 for first, 15 for second, 11 for third. Keep in mind, you're also competing against uh, the foreign importers. Or the, 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 yeah, or the foreign exporters that Japan is importing goods from. So in this region, nobody has any tiles. So the foreign market wins first place and nobody gets second or third. So no points awarded for this region. Again, this region, uh, the foreign markets would win. They have total influence because you'd add up their scores. And again, no tiles here. Now, even though the yellow player had a plus two train, that's only a modifier to a tile. So he or she would have had to have a tile to get plus two added onto it. And again, the boat doesn't apply since no player came in first or second in this region. Here's the first region where we actually have some scoring to take place. So let's first add up the foreign market. So three, four, six, seven. So the foreign markets have seven influence on this territory. So right now they're in the lead. Um, yellow has three, five, but they have a train. So they also have seven. So yellow and the foreign markets are tied with seven. So let's say we're in the first round. Since they're tied for first and second, they would split these victory points rounded down. So 17 points divided in two. So they'd each get eight victory points. Well, obviously the foreign market wouldn't get any, but the yellow player would get eight victory points. 
They also have a boat, and so since they came in first or second in the region, they get an additional two victory points in this case added on from their boat. So the yellow player would score 10 points for this region. The purple player came in third, first scoring round, so they would get five points for this region. And again, in this simple example, this region didn't have any tiles, so no players would be awarded any victory points for this region. So scoring will happen, regional scoring will happen three times during the game. The first one, the second one, and at the end of the game. So when each player got their final three actions, you'll do a final regional scoring, and then you'll go to end game scoring. So before we do end game scoring, you do have to pay your workers. So the first thing you would do is discard all your money like you normally would during a consolidation action, but it's not a normal consolidation. You would discard all your money you would collect income based on your yen track, and then you would pay your workers. Again, 3000 per color. And like normally, for every color you couldn't pay, uh, you would lose two points on the victory point track. So you collect your money, pay your workers, and you have your, some remaining money. And then you do your end game bonuses here. So the first one here is you'd get victory points for every 6,000 yen you now had in your budget. And again, this would be based on the multiplier if you added a multiplier here, you could get more points. Here you get victory points based on the number of star tokens you revealed in the shipping market, or the ships. So here I wouldn't get any, because I did not reveal that. If I was able to place that on the board, I'd get one times the victory points I placed on this area. The same thing for trains, you would get victory points. Um, now again, if I, had, if I never placed a marker there, I'm not scoring any victory points at the end of the game. I would have had to have placed something there to score at the end of the game. So in this case, I would get, let's say, four times the number of train stars, and I got this train on the board, so I would get four points for that added to my score. Here you get victory points based on the number of different regions you're in. So if I was able, lucky enough, to get a five, and place it there, I would get five points, and if I was in all four of the regions, that's 20 point bonus at the end of the game. Here, for every factory that has a level two machine upgrade, you can score victory points. For every level two and level three factory you have, you could get victory points. Here you get victory points based on the number of stars revealed on the coal track. So you'll see there's stars here on the coal track, so if I was able to get this up to there, I would have gone two stars times whatever victory point multiplier I had here. Here, it's pre-printed, so everyone will get one point times stars revealed on their knowledge track. So you'd have to at least get to there to get your first star. One thing to point out for both the coal and the knowledge track, there are a couple buildings, factories, that give you a bonus star. So if you were to get this factory, you would count that additional star when calculating these final bonuses. And then finally, uh, victory points for each pair of contracts you fulfilled at the end of the game. So if I was to get three of these fulfilled, that's still only one pair. So victory points multiplied by each pair. Also remember you could never stack multiple tiles on the same thing. You can only ever have one multiplier and you'd have to remember you'd have to overwrite that one so that is the final scoring of the game tabulate the scores and the most victory points wins the game and i think that's everything you need to set up and play nippon